Kia ora tato, everybody. Welcome to the full council meeting, 25th February 2021. Um, welcome to treaty partners, members of the public, elected members and staff. Koro Don. <coughs> Motaku Korero Tanga, Kamihia Tuna, Kakoto, Mataki, Unga Maunga, Okotona, Kotama, Ite Newa, Lorena, Namihi Nui, Amihi Aroha, Alakia Koto, Konga Paui Fidia, Konga Paui Marama, Tiao Mairoto, Marama Mairoto, Koenenga Pokau, Koenenga Pokoeke, Koenenga Poko Maya, Kotepoda, or Tene Pare, Ko te paura o tēne hui, kia hui te ora, kia hui te mārama, hui e tā e ki e. Te tai rā, te tai rā, he pari ana rā te tai ki he, he pari ana rā te tai ki te motu tapu a kāpiti. Ara ki a rātou, ngā kau heke heke kau mātua, rātou e takoto mai rā i roto i ngā ana, ana he, he atua, he atua. Ko tīmata te pari mai ngā tai a rātou mā ki roto rā i tēnei whare. I runa rā tēnā, kā rāngona hi e mātou, ala kia ki atu rātou, kia haumaru tēnei hui, kia haumaru te tūtū ki te kōrero, kia haumaru rā te tahi ki te tahi. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Kia haere o kumihi, ala kia waitahu, Hala i kite rā mātou i runa i te pauaka, i taki hoki atu rā rātou ki reira. Hala i te rā e rū whenua hia a o tautahi. Ana nō reira, ko rātou i mate mai reira, he waru te kau mā rima rātou. Ana rātou i tae atu ki reira, ala ki te whiu whiu haere e ngā puti puti ki roto rā i te pōkare kare o te awa. A nō reira, moi mai rā koutou, moi mai rā koutou, ana wai ho rā rātou, kia rātou, kia taki hoki mai, kia mātou, ko tai mai i tēnei wā, ko ngā mate kai tēnā, kai tēnā, kai tēnei o tātou, nō mai hara mai ngā mate, kia tūria rā te marae nē, kia mauria mai te pare kawa kawa, kia tangihia, kia mihia rā koutou, nō reira i ngā mate moi mai, moi mai, a moi mai rā. E ki ana te kōrero wai ho rā rātou, kia rātou, a kia taki hoki mai, kia mātou, ko tae mai mo tēnei kaupapa, kei mua i a mātou. Ana ko te kaupapa rā ki tāku nei mōhio, ana ko te ara tomo kanga, ana me te maru koe ora, koe nā rā pē, he rua kei ngā take kei mua i a mātou. Nō reira ka huri atu rā, kei te ngā kōrero e kia nei, ka tōtō te puna, i Ngāti tō rangatira, ala ka mīmiti rā ki Ngāti Raukawa. Ala ka tō tō i Ngāti Raukawa, ka mīmiti rā ki Ngāti tō rangatira. Kei wainga nui ko te ati awa, ko Ngāti awa, ala ko Ngāti haumi arāno. Ana ko rātou e pupuri ana te tō tō o ngā puna, kia kore rā e whati ngā puna o te aroha. Ko reira, ane rā taku mihi kia koutou e kare mā. Nō reira kāre tō rō ki te kōreo, he ngari kei te kōrero hau, e tiki ni mai hau he kōrero mai o tēnei rākau, ko te rākau nē nā Jim Weber kē i ho atu nē tēnei rākau kia hau nē. Anā, mēna he wana kōrero, kei te he kei ngā kōrero kei no toi tēnei rākau. Nō reira taku koutou, ka tōko tāi mai, kāre tō rō te kōrero, he ngari, wai ho rā te kōrero kia koutou. Nō reira tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. A tēnā rā tātou katoa. E re re rā te motu nei ki roto ko ia o Pari haka nā tohura Whakahaere mai ngā hāti Kanda vi te re pai pai Ngā i te motu nei Tō piki tanga kei Te pūre pota o e te tanga kei Tō roa nui i a whakāro Te eka mai o te kōrero Ei, ei, ei 
Matau tandua ki a koe e tohu e Te ngā kau whakapuke tonu me aha i ara Me a uru e ko te au kaweru whakamo Motu e piu piu an kei te uru e kei te tonga Tahara mai ki roto ka tō hari, hari, hai, hai, hai. Te hari hoki i ngā kupu kei roto i te wai atara, nā mua upoko e tito, nā ka hua tūrā, ka weake kia parihaka, nā kia horo tahi tātou i roto i tēne o tātou hui. Ko te hea hea o tā mātou koro matua kia whakapāke hea tia au oku kōrero, Engari, mena, he hea na rā koutou ki te hea. Mō hea hea woku kōreo. Can you come to me after? Because I think I'll be speaking too long. So, if you want to know what I talk, spoke about, I uh, just spoke briefly about um, we are all po. My first part of my, uh, my uh, karakia was we're all equal here. We're all equal. There's no one different to the others, unless you get more money than me. And so, uh, but everyone's the same. And then I went on to say the tides, they flow out to Kapiti Island in... Um, and they flow there and they flow to our ancestors, the ancestors that are buried over there. And they come back with their blessings into this whare. And with them they tell us to be, be safe in what we say, be safe in what we talk about. And, and then the third part of my quarter was, um, I talked about toto te puna. When the tide pulls at Ngāti Tōr empties over here at uh, Ngāti Raukawa. And when it does the opposite way around, and what it's talking about is the influence one tribe influences the other. And in the middle is Te Atiawa, and because I'm in that area too. And Ngāti, Ngāti Rauka, Ngāti, Ngāti, uh, no, no, uh, Te Atiawa, Ngāti Awa, and Ngāti Haumia, and they're holding you together so the, so the tides of love that don't break. So we're all here on that, uh, on those kōrero. Nō reira e kare mā taku koutou, e tai mai te nā koutou, te nā koutou. Thank you, Nene Jin and uh, Korodon. And on item two on council blessings, Councillor Sophie Hamlet, can you kindly increase us? I a mato e fili fili ana inga taku kei mua i o mato aro aro e pono ana mato kakaha tonu kite fakapo mahara hua pai munga hapore e mahine mato. Me kaha hoki mato kato kia fai hua kia tota ka ta mato mahi. A mate mai te tiro fakamua me hi hiri katai te arahi iroto ite kotahi tanga me te aroha. Kia ora. Tu tiro fakamua ki a tina. Tina. Kai ki e. Item number three. Apologies. I haven't received any apologies. Item number four. Declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda. I have not received any. Um. Item number five, public speaking time. Allow me to introduce this protocols around us. Now, today is a significant meeting and we have a very large number of speakers. Due to the number of speakers, each speaker may speak for up to three minutes. Allow me to introduce Mr. Grayson of the Democratic Services. He is the sound man. At two and a half minutes, he will make a ding. Can you make the ding? That's the thing. What that tells you is that you, you got half a minute to wind up your speech, not wind us up. Well, that comes with me. Um, so that's sound control. Now, members of the public who have booked ahead will be given precedence over people who have not booked. Allow me to highlight certain protocols for the public speaking time speakers. I have the discretion to terminate speakers who are repeating views presented by earlier speaker. I tend to be liberal about that. Uh, it's better that you self-regulate yourself rather than having the chair interfere. But where I will not be liberal is that I will terminate the speaking time of any speaker who is disrespectful, offensive, or who criticizes elected members of staff. Should a member of the public behave in a disorderly member, manner or create a disturbance, I will ask them to leave the meeting and there's protocols in terms of the warnings that I'll give. I know, you know, the issues you 
very passionate for a lot of us. And so I just ask for you to follow the protocol so that we can manage this properly. Anyone who wishes to record the meeting must notify me at the start. Um, any recordings, please do not cause a disruption. Otherwise, I'll have to stop the recording. I will now go on to the speakers. The first speaker for today is Dr. Taku Parai. He's chair of Nati Toa Rangatira. Please, sir. Welcome. Ata mana nui mea ki a kāpiti tēnei kamihi a te rāki o koutou ngā te raukaua a te ati aua nui ki a ngā te toa e mihi nei ki a koutou katoa. Te mana nui o ta hāpuri mea ki i tēnā e te mihi a te rāki a koutou te kaunihia. Ka taia mātou mea ki ki a ngā te toa mea ki hei karangahia te kaupapa kei mua te araro. Mea ki hei rongo ana ki a mātou, ka hara mai mea ki te whakatoa ana tō mātou nei whakaaro. A tō mātou nei kōrero ngia ki o koutou te take. It's a privilege to be here in your midst this morning, Mr. Mayor, and to be able to convey Ngāti Tō's position in terms of the take that's in front of us this morning. At the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, Māori had in control 66 million acres. By the time uh, 12 years later, we had eight. After the 1866 land wars, we had six. And today, within the Māori land holding, we have basically a, a bundle of pockets of land here, there, and uh, all, all over New Zealand scattered. The majority of land holding within the country is held by the government dock. With that land confiscation went the names. The traditional names held on those lands by our ancestors, by our tūpuna. Today I believe we are here, we've been gathered to talk about a particular name. Te Uruhi. A name which Ngāti Tō supports in terms of it being used uh, in the suggested way that has been put to the council by some of our representatives and by some of our leaders. Why we support it is because it continues to connect us to the past and it brings us breath into the name for the future and particularly for our younger generation and the generations to come. So Ngāti Tōr is here to make a statement and to make it known to Council. Please consider this name a great name, a name that's inclusive, a name that's been buried in the Fenua for a long, long time, and now we have the opportunity to allow it to bring it to the lips of our community in terms of an educational practice and in terms of the rebirth of our names and of our own. Tenakota. Are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, kia ora, Doctor. Thank you for your presentation today. Um, you mentioned about the name Te Uruhe not being used, but it's referred to in our McLean Park Management Plan as one of the names for the existing park there. So I'm just interested. Well, has nothing to, were you involved in the getting yeah, yeah. of that name to the park? or? I can't recall myself being involved in it, but uh, if it has come from either one of the Uwis that I've suggested as Mano Whenua, then Ngāti Tōr support is there. Perfect, thank you. But what I'm trying to refer is to to have those names, as in, those ancestral names, actually conversed and socialised more. And with that comes the whole educational package around that. Is that right? That, that, could, that could be a question for council. I mean, do, do he? I am aware of. I don't know who McLean was. <laughs> Kia ora. Thank, thank you very much. Um, the next speaker is Andre Baker, Chair of Te Atewa Ki Whakarangadai Transport. 
Uh, kia ora mai tātou, tuatahi mimi ake ki te karere o te kaunihira uh, rāko o te ora e whakataku to mai nei ngā whakamoi miti mo te, te ata nei uh, mo tātou te whakamini ngā e hare mai nei uh, ki te nei tō tātou nei hui hui ngā uh, tēnā koe te koro matua, koutou ngā, ngā te honga o te kaunihira o, o kāpiti kai a koe te wahine e tuku ngā inoi ki te atua a tēnei mahi, a mihi nunui ki a koutou. Um, as the chair of Tati Awa ki Whako Rungo Tai, um, I want to just take us back to some significant interactions that occurred some time ago with Rangatahi from Tati Awa ki Whako Rungo Tai, and it absolutely referred to uh, the area that is known today as McLean Park. Our Rangatahi's vision and their engagement with the mayor at that time in a different capacity was about the naming and the history of that area. And so we know that there are very, very ancient kōrero about Honui and Anaya coming through here. And that area, that wahi tapu, that sacred place out there, he named it Waiorungo Mai. Uh, following that, uh, with the uh, advent of the migration of our three iwi into this area, um, what I want to acknowledge is the generous gift of Ngāti Tō of Tūruhi Pā to the people of Tatiawa, more importantly, uh, the hapu that I affiliate to Ngāti Puke Tapu. So Tatiawa ki Wakarungotai stands today in honour of that generous gift of the relationship that continues today, of the vision to create a significant centre for all community to be attached to. I'm, I'm sure from what the narrative that I've seen attached to the video uh, that has been created, it, it's intended to be something that resonates with the whole community. But I'm really standing here to influence your thinking around the importance of our taiohi and our rangatahi being engaged in adult conversations about their future. That their voices can't be lost in the debate and in the discussion that you have today that their vision to develop that site out there as a connection from that sacred site to our, to our motu over there is important and mustn't be lost in your deliberations. Uh, Te Atiawa is excited to have um, our representatives attached to this project and we're looking very, very fondly on generating a closer relationship as the proposed development of that site um, comes to fruition standing alongside the Confederation partners of Ngāti Raukawa and Ngāti Tōa. Kia ora mai tātou. Andre, if you just hang on, any, any questions from the councillors? Councillor Randall. Yeah, um, thank you for your comments. Um, during the McLean Park Development Plan, myself and Mahina Baker attended almost every briefing, every workshop, on the development of that plan, um, starting in, I think, 2017. And her concern, one of her major concerns around that part, was the cleaning up of the stream there. Do you have any views on that? Or First of all, I, I need to declare an interest. I think I know Dr Baker. <laughs> um, I absolutely, uh, again, want to highlight the fact that Tatiawa Ki Whakarungotai, as you may well know, has secured a significant contract in partnership with Te Papa Atafai. Uh, the intention is to focus entirely on the waterways within our catchment. As the tiniest iwi within this confederation, we have the biggest demographic. And so the area that you're talking about is not the only area uh, where we have contamination of our waterways. And Titiwa is absolutely committed to ensure that um, the work that's undertaken, even just to create a community facility, creates the opportunity for community to learn more about our collective responsibility for looking after the environment. And so it's absolutely important, again, that we find avenues to employ our youth, which is what we're currently doing, recruiting them to stand alongside their pakeke in order to support the conservation and the retention of all of our waterways that feed us and sustain us. Councillor James Coates. 
Morena, Andre, and um, firstly, congratulations on um, becoming our grandfather, albeit a little bit late, but the first time we've seen you in this council. I'm still Morena. waiting to sign my contract, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, um, I, a question just following up from the earlier question around the name that was gifted. Um, could you maybe clarify, my understanding was that that is not a new name that's been gifted, but really... Uh, my word not, might not be right, but the revitalisation of an old name of the par that existed on that site. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sure elected members have some history now in front of you, but what I'm wanting to affirm today is the importance of recognising relationships that pre-existed this council, pre-existed the settlement of this area of people who don't belong or affiliate to our iwi. It's important that that name is honoured. It's important that that name is... Um, is known and is relevant to who we are within this district. So Tatiawa absolutely needs to acknowledge the gifting uh, of Turuhi to the people of Tatiawa and Puketapu. And, and I hope that that's the information that's been generated to help you deliberate on the decision that you need to make. So Councillor uh, James, it's, it's actually a matter of relationships here. And first and foremost, we're obligated to respect the relationship that we have across the confederation of those three iwi. Mm -hmm. That's not able to be compromised or minimised. And your deliberation on what's appropriate needs to consider whether or not you are prepared to minimise our relationship that has been here and has pre-existed this moment. Councillor Hanford. He mihinui ki a koe, Andre. Um, a quick question from me. You mentioned the importance of rangatahi voices and the vision for the next generation. I'm just wondering, in terms of the impacts of climate change and sea level rise, the kinds of um, threads you see with that in terms of where the gateway is kind of proposed to be and how you see that potentially risking um, any development that does happen there and the stories then that would be um, held within that. So just interested on your thoughts. Again, I'm going to take the liberty of, of really making reflection on that by referring to our Taio unit, who, who I'm proud to say provide us and you with the best advice that we have, qualified advice, experienced advice. So we've had our hands on this through Mahinarangi and our team. Um, I think you would know before now if the, the site A was not suitable for us to create this magic project that we're proposing. So uh, that's my answer to you. I'm, I'm happy to place my trust and confidence in our expert opinion, which so often is seconded and which so often is provided to you to inform our decision making. Councillor Holbrook. Kia ora, uh, Andre. Um, this is something that I could have um, equally asked uh, Dr. Parai today. I just think it's really important to understand the importance of the gifting of a name and we've been around a lot of conversations around names at this council table and I just think it's I'd, I'd just like you to expand a little bit on the mana that a name has because in our western culture we tend to attach a name to something whereas in in Māoridom it's more about that the name is embedded and it has mana in itself it has intrinsic mana and how, how that kind of is relevant in this discussion. Tēnā koe, Janet. The first of all, the, the use of the word mana. The, the, the mana is not something that's man or woman made. The mana is something that you inherit through a higher energy, a spiritual energy. Um, so we never have the power to remove mana, but we certainly can minimise mana. We can also fuck a mana. We can also uplift mana. So the use of the term mana for me is a matter um, that I think we need to consider in terms of the honour and the gift that you receive by having mana that's bestowed on you by Atua in that spiritual realm can never be taken from you, but it certainly can be minimised. And I'm using the word minimised because um, it hasn't been a big... Uh, an easy decision uh, to come before this council and to allow you to consider using this name. That's manner enhancing for us to offer that to you. And I don't think that it's in your interest or ours or the community to minimise that.
Andre, thank you for that. Thank you for your time. The next speaker is Rauri Fogner, the Nati Tour representative of the Economic Development Kotahitanga Board. Is he here? Can I ask then for the next speaker, Tim Tahiwi Nati Rawakawa, representative to the Economic Development Kotahitanga Board? Um, I'm here ko kentahi wi taku ingoa uh, ko ngati to rangatira tiatiawa uh, ngati rai kwa na iwi um, I'm here as the representative for ngati rai kwa who sits on the economic development board um, I am here in support of this project to me and I'd like to talk to all my colleagues and what they have said um, to me it shows a commitment from the council to invest in te taiao. Uh, it also shows a commitment from the council to protect our taonga, which is integral in all the iwi in this area. Um, it's a very important landmark for all of us, um, and it also shows a commitment to protect that um, through this gateway project. It also shows a commitment from the, uh, from the council to communicate to the wider community our story, which so often is only told in limited spaces, um, and this showcases us as an iwi and our story and the importance of these taonga to us. So that is important and that is increasing around New Zealand with the introduction of um, history being taught in schools and, and all that discussion that's going on in there. This is just part of that. So this is us telling our story in a very community-based project. Um, for me, it also signals that the council is committed to that partnership with iwi going forward. Now, th this project encompasses both iwi and community, and it's been a long time coming that we've actually gone forward as a partnership, and as iwi, we've waited for that for a long time. So from that perspective, to me, it's quite important. Um, so yes short and sweet, I'm here to support the Gateway Project. Any questions? Uh, any questions? Doesn't to be any questions. Thank you very much. <laughs> Can I call next speaker, uh, Mr. Russell Spratt, Tiatia was representative to the Economic Development Kotahitanga Board. Your Worship, councillors, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, kia ora, uh, kia ora koutou. I'm Russell Spratt. It's my, uh, my privilege to be representing uh, my iwi Atiawa Kifakarongotai today in relation to our uh, Economic Development Kotahitanga Board and our views. Uh, iwi see uh, Te Urihi as a living expression of the partnership relationship that we've built over many decades with council and the community at large. Uh, our place at the table is an honour, and it's one that uh, represents and reflects the 200 years that Atiawa uh, Ki Whakarongotai have lived in this Rohi, this region. Unsurprisingly, we have an aspiration for our region. We see Te Urihi as a tangible way to give expression to our aspirations for continued care and support of the places that we connect to, and you all do as well. Here we understand that projects like Te Urihi require all sorts of investment, money, time, knowledge, relationships, and generosity, uh, and care. And we also understand that when you offer these things openly, rewards will follow. Yes, jobs will be created, including short term during the build, ongoing as the project uh, reaches its, um, its full expectations, uh, and then a fuller growth as people are attracted to the presence of this wonderful proposed facility. Let me be clear. Iwi are agreed. Te Urihi will offer uh, places to engage and to share uh, many important elements of our world. Te Taiao, our environment and all that that means. Environmental awareness, protection, sustainability and a place to talk about the, the birds, uh, the bird sanctuary, the marine reserve and how Te Ao Māori, the Māori world is woven into these things. Tikanga, 
uh, our customs and ways of being and interconnectedness with the region and the place. Mātauranga, education, our um, opportunities to share insights, both ancient and contemporary, about this place and all its guises. It's true, Māori know a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff, and we'd like to share it with you all. Or Oha Oha, or economics, the opportunities that exist to uh, contribute to building the economy and the environment sustainably uh, through celebrating um, the power that is this place and to Udihi. Many of the economic benefits that come with tourism and locals vis visiting the island are not effectively captured, and to Udi pro provides the opportunity to better direct and capture tourist spending in Paraparamu Beach area, and this was in fact incorporated into the design. So Irihi will help strengthen the links between Kapiti Island and the mainland and to help all to understand the national significance of the island and its importance to iwi. It's also a place for rangatahi to stand, to engage and to grow. As council uh, partners, Atiawa Kifakaromotai are committed to support the safe delivery of this proposed community asset, an asset that we are certain will enhance the mana of the island as well as council's partnership with iwi and our entire community. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Holliday. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to clarify something, if you don't mind. Um, Tiurihi is a living expression, a tangible way to give expression. Does that need to be in a building? Um, would it need to be limited to a building? Would you have the expectation that this storytelling would be spread potentially throughout? the park area, not just limited to the building as such? I think you answered your own question. I, in, indeed, it's an expression to the building at its heart, but it's the heart of the entire story. Yeah. The, the habitation of, of this area by us and our gifting of that to our community to share in all that that represents. It's a metaphor. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Councillor Coates. Modena Russell, my questions are a That's little bit different. Having the privilege of um, being involved in the selection of the Kotahitanga members and the high calibre of applicants that we had come through, mm. I'm interested, given um, the um, statements from yourself and others today, the collision of a Te Māori perspective uh, alongside the other perspectives within the group and something that we talked about in terms of the um, both sides of that Kotahitanga board raising the, um, I guess, the intellectual and cultural value from within the members. So we've got a Te Ao Māori perspective over this project mm -hmm. and also um, your other members have brought more, um, uh, not exclusive skills, but other skills to the table around the economics and so forth. So could you maybe, I'm interested in how those dynamics work given this is the sort of first um, exposure of that, uh, the Kotahitanga board in this environment. That was a big question. <laughs> I'll try and answer it um, as, best, as best I can. Uh, I, I think what you're asking me is, is how does the uh, does a te ao Māori construct, a Māori worldview, infuse into the rest of the community? Is that, is, is that what you've asked? It's the, I guess it's the mix um, between a, a non te ao Māori view of the other board members that are learning in that process oh, sure. and the blend of that and how that's I guess brought you as a clearly as a kotahitanga board to support this project. Mm -hmm. Those different views have complemented each other, um, and also um, brought different attributes to the decision. Oh, certainly, and indeed, it is true that that the that the, the board that we're all members of is unified in a number of areas, and in fact, it, it doesn't have disunity as best I can tell. And the unity stems from the notion of this place being a a community asset one that provides opportunity for a number of areas of interaction, growth, support, and of course there are all sorts of Māori words and English words that mean the same thing. And the bringing together of a Māori perspective and a mainstream perspective together is in fact what makes New Zealand quintessentially who we are. It is the power in this bicultural nation. In fact, to say not is to be a dinosaur. This project is an expression of partnership. The partners are mana whenua, tangata whenua, and the rest of New Zealand together, and together we're a circle. And, and so this, this board that we're a part of is part of that process in giving expression to all those views that are really important. And we know there are some controversial views in there, and we've canvassed those amongst ourselves. And we are comfortable that through the experience on that group that we have interrogated the concerns 
and we have fully interrogated the opportunities, and as a result, we are supportive of this kaupapa. 100%. There weren't any ifs, buts, or maybe. This was a no-brainer. Kelda. No other questions. Thank you very much. Kelda. Our next speaker is either Naomi Solomon or Pania Solomon. Any of the Solomons here? No? Can I call Mr. John Barrett from the Capri Island Tours? In the meantime, can I ask Mr. Chris Gerritsen? He's Diatiawa's Gateway Centre Project Governance Board. Welcome. Um, I'm sorry, um, Council, I've not been able to, to hear the um, proceedings, um, so I'm not sure uh, who's spoken or what they've spoken about, but the uh, issues I've sought to raise and, and to highlight um, really focus around some of the media that I've, I've seen over the last little while uh, in, in some of the most unlikely places. And the issues that I can speak about confidently and I think authoritatively are around visitor numbers and growth, uh, how the changes occurred on, in terms of Kapiti Island. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to get down into detail about the the, um, uh, the the pros and the cons of the of the Gateway Centre. It's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. And people might say I've got a personal interest in this. Um, I had an interest in this well before I was involved in the tourism business. I can tell you, I've been involved in this cope up for 30 years. So the benefits that we saw 30 years ago are are now magnified 10 times. So I believe personally that the benefits are just uh, stronger now than they were 30 years ago. Simply because our, our district's growing, our country's growing and the world's growing, even allowing for COVID. <coughs> so I'm not sure where detracting parties got their figures and projections from. I'm not sure how much councillors know about the history of, of visitation to Kapiti Island, but from my 20 plus years of experience in this particular business, uh, there's been a lot of changes that I, I've seen and I can talk about. I've seen five other operators in this Capital Island tourism business come and go. And I'm, I'm only saying that because we think we've got our working model right. And we think the data and the projections we've used over the last 20 years have been pretty, pretty well bang on. So I'm confident in saying the projections that we've used and we're using for the next 20 years are pretty much in line with what the PwC um, report is saying. Um, I'm not going to make any comment about the previous stats, but the, the latest report, I think, are pretty, pretty close to the mark. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm confident in our modelling, and our modelling says there's a real future in, in Kapiti District and Kapiti Island in terms of tourism. Forget about COVID. Uh, you know, in 2023, 24, uh, we'll be we'll be wondering about um, what was this all about, actually, in my in my opinion. But just to give you an idea about the change in the visitor um, demographic, back in the 80s, 25 visitors a day were permitted to go to Kapiti five days a week. It's a bit different today. In the 90s, uh, 25 people seven days a week, so there was growth. 
late 90s it went up to 50, sorry, up to 50 per day, seven days a week, so there was this constant growth in the visitor, allowable visitor numbers um, that, that was um, part of the, of the dock planning. Uh, then in the early 2000, the limit was set at 160 visitors per day over seven days per week. Now, we don't... Mr. We don't Barrett, Mr. Barrett, you need to wind, wind up. Okay. Your, Gee. There may be people who might okay. want to ask a question. Okay. Well, look, I, I can, I'm happy to answer any questions about the stats and figures. That's easy. But the biosecurity, I don't want to dwell too much on, on my involvement, but um, the biosecurity issue... Uh, associated with the Gateway Centre will change the game in terms of our, our Kapiti Island tourism future. Numbers will increase, whether we like it or not. How we manage the increase is going to be crucial to that, but numbers will increase. It's just it's an, it's naive to think that's not going to happen. It's just what's happening everywhere in the country and the world. So we need to have facilities, not just for the biosecurity, but for comfortable world-class visitor management. We need something like this at Paraparamu Beach. It will be an asset for Paraparamu Beach, an asset for Kapiti District, an asset for the Lower North Island, an asset for Aotearoa New Zealand. It is, it is just a no-brainer, and I hope the councillors aren't that naive to think that um, it's, a, it, it's not such a big project. Uh, it is. I'm not sure what my iwi colleagues and Fano have talked about, but uh, I haven't. I haven't been drawn into the into the discussion regarding the cultural value of this uh, project. I think time time's up. Can I have uh, Councillor Holbro then Councillor Coots? <coughs> Uh, kia ora, John. Your knowledge around this kaupapa is certainly so valuable today. Um, so we've had some submissions around um, concerns around environmental impacts of increased visitor numbers. Would you have any comment to make around the management of that and whether you see that as an issue? Certainly. So I think I, I mentioned earlier in my, my little piece that visitor numbers to Kapiti Island have increased steadily over the years. The ecological and, conserva and conservation value of Kapiti Island has increased um, exponentially, in spite of or and regardless of the increase in visitor numbers. The visitor numbers are managed more than adequately, and we can manage more. There's no question about that. Um, management of visitors is something that uh, is, is a learned business, and the, the Department of Conservation have, have learned quite a few lessons about how to do that um, in a sustainable way. So personally, and, and I do have a personal interest in this, the, uh, the sustainability of an increase in visitor numbers uh, is not the biggest issue. Marina, John, um, <coughs> apologies to um, put you on the spot there, but you do have um, 30 years experience in this. I'm, I'm hoping that you're able to to answer this, you'd mentioned the increase in numbers and that the projected growth you think is um, definitely achievable. Some have argued that that growth would have happened anyway without the introduction of a building. So what I'm interested in is why you think the building will make uh, a difference to those growth numbers. I think we can all probably agree that growth will happen regardless. The question is probably how much more growth, and I'm not asking you for a percentage, but I am interested to know why you think the building itself will make a difference in terms of Okay, uh, it's a good question, an uh, important question. Um, look, we can continue handling visitors on the beach if we want to, or in a cafe, or in the car park. We could do that, and our businesses would probably keep on going, and we probably wouldn't be any worse off. But in my opinion, the district would be worse off. It's not uh, the the attraction is a world class attraction. Kapiti Island is world class. The business leading up to the departure and return is third world class. We want something that's going to be manner enhancing for, for Kapiti, for our people, and that includes everybody in the room. What we're doing now is not manner enhancing. It's third world class. If those of you, I'm sure many of the councillors have, have experienced world class visitor attractions. It's not what we do at Pada Primary Beach. We want that. We want that for, for our district and for our people. We want people to go away from Kapiti District saying what a fantastic experience. 
Councillor McCann, then Councillor Compton. Kia ora, John. Um, Kia ora. Thank you very much for coming here today. One of the issues that has been raised, the, count, the, the working group of councillors, was the, the cost that would be borne by the operators. And I've got a couple of questions about this. Are you concerned about that cost? Uh, noting, of course, that what was originally proposed was much higher than what's now proposed. No, I'm not concerned about that. Um, if the costs associated with operating in, in something like the Gateway Centre were going to put us out of business, we'd be having that serious discussion now. Um, I think quite the reverse. This, this is an opportunity for us to develop new product, more um, revenue generating product. Uh, this building, this, this centre, and I'm, I don't want to refer to the building, I want to refer to the place actually, I want to refer to Duda here as the place. That will enable us to grow our economic uh, stability and future. Uh, I think if, if operators aren't in, the, in a position to, to, to change their product, to grow their product, uh, to take advantage of this fantastic opportunity, then they probably shouldn't be in the business. Moving on from that comment, because I, I can see that, that that raises a few hackles. One of the things that we uh, talked about as, as the working group, and it was raised, was the uncertainty that does exist, and you, I think we all, we all know that there is some uncertainty now, and you think that in, in future years that, will, that we will go back to normal. Do you think um, that the councillors need to consider whether we have a monitorium on charging the businesses uh, for the use of the facility uh, in the short term, given the fact that we don't know what's around the corner just at the moment? Um, well, that's, that's Council's call, of course. Um, any call that Council's make would have to be considered by, by operators uh, at, at the time. If, if any call was not going to be economically viable for, for a business, then hopefully those businesses would say, no, thanks very much. The other thing... is the ability for um, uh, council to relook at the fees should the estimated visitor numbers, which you've said are now reasonable, if they don't actually occur, then council will be able to revisit the fees. Do you think that addresses any uncertainty adequately? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I think as long as there's useful and meaningful discussion around that issue, uh, I, I, I just can't get away from the fact that the opportunity is so great that business should be able to um, develop, develop to the degree that incre reasonable increases should be tolerable. Thank you. Councillor Randall. Yeah, yeah, thank you, um, Mr Barrett. Thank you for your comment about um, visitor numbers have increased. Now, I've been looking at the dock figures, and they show over a period of 21 years, um, the growth has been less than 5% applying the dock figures year on year. Do you have any comments on that, please? No, no, if that's, if that's what the dock figures show, um, that's probably pretty accurate. What the dock figures don't show is the uh, statistics to, to our business at the northern end of the island. Uh, those figures are completely outside of, of the dock collection. Councillor Holiday. Mr Barrett, thank you very much for coming in today. Um, can I just ask, um, with the gradual growth over the last 30 odd years, um, and this is an assumption on behalf, is the infrastructure that DOC has in place on the island is obviously very critical uh, with regards to the visitor experience as well. In your opinion, with regards to, I guess, where we're at at the moment, but also where we're moving forward to in the future uh, with expansion and, uh, and numbers increasing potentially, um, is the dock infrastructure up to the task at the moment, or will that need to also increase, you know, in partnership with the number increase as well? And do you think realistically the timeframes will match up with that? Well, I know dock uh, are mindful of the need um, 
for and the potential for future growth in visitor numbers. And I know that they are working as hard as they can to keep abreast of any any increases. Um, but I know there are some legislation changes that need to take place. There's a whole lot of work needs to be done and to enable DOC to do more work. Um, the, the thing is, really, that at the moment, the island can cope with more visitors. There's, there's no question about that. The tracks are hard. Uh, it, it's The management's good. I think we're a little way off yet being concerned about having too many visitors on Capital Island, but I know that DOC are mindful of the need to, to up their game. Um, that's really all I can say about it, I think. Councillor Bravano. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, John, for coming along today. Um, so I'm just um, interested in, so obviously with this proposed gateway, there is a biosecurity aspect to it. And so I'm just interested um, to hear your thoughts um, as an operator there um, about how many potential um, incursions have been stopped going to Kapiti Island from visitors who are going to go to Kapiti Island. And yes, People ask us that every day when we go through their bags and say, why do we have to do this? Because, you know, and how many times have you found anything? We've found nothing in, in the last 10 years. My, answer, my stock answer to that question is, if you're familiar with the Zealandia situation in Wellington, the, the um, mainland island in Wellington, and their biosecurity process, they have intercepted um, unwanted visitors, mice, in, into Zealandia. So, and that's purely a, a matter of numbers. It's purely a numbers business. The more people, the more the risk. Thank you. There doesn't seem to be any other questions, so thank you very much, Mr. Better. Thanks. Mr. Chris Garrison, Tiatiawa representative on the Gateway Centre Project Governance Board. Kia uh, ora um, First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Chair, the Mayor, and Korodon for your karakia, and uh, Fano, Fano Nui, and our visitors. Look, um, I've been, I've had the privilege of listening to this Kore Roar that has gone, and that we've all just heard. And um, I would like to say, as we do say in Māori, to Totoko exactly what's been said. That means I give my support fully. But I have the privilege of being the one that will be doing the carving and the design work to go on this beautiful whare or on the gateway and um, like I gave the spell last Tuesday I think it was or Thursday and um, I alluded to a few things but what I'd really like to allude to now is that um, if you've listened to that kōrero contently what it talks about is the union of the three iwi and this rohe and our partnership with you the council that Two can be written and carved in wood in kōrero alongside our kōrero and our pūrāko and our stories. You know, and to me that would be something not only unique but would tighten the partnership and bring us close together, you know. That is just an expression and I also use that expression of the Christmas lights that we need a beacon that shines and hence I said like a tree, a Christmas tree with lights on it. Well I've just f felt that I've got such power or mana if you want to call it behind me that those lights would most probably blow to bits because they would be so bright and like I keep alluding to that um, the round wines are still in the cupboard, we're eating the marshmallows now so let's get together and enjoy our time together and push hard on the agenda of this. And the other thing is that I'd like just to give you a small story is um, when we were children and we would come down to see our nana at Waikanae and mum would sit in the front seat with dad, dad would be driving and then mum would start talking as soon as we'd sort of get to Foxton about this is the land that grew the, grew the harakeke, this is what happened here, this used to be there and the delight in my mother's heart and in her eyes just telling the stories about her people 
was actually something very warming to the heart. And that's something I believe we can do as Iwi, quite simply, by sharing our kōrero. Kia ora moira. Any questions to Mr. Garrison? Sorry. Mr. Sorry, any questions? Councillor Compton. Uh, kia ora, Chris. Thank you for coming along today. My question, so you're here in your capacity as a member of the governance group? Is that yes, correct? yeah, yeah. So last week we heard from um, the governance group's chair, um, George Hickton, that the governance group had met again to review the business case and the PwC stuff. Yeah. So I just want understanding of what you went through in that process. Um, I have to be honest, I was um, unable to make that meeting because of um, my, my other commitments of work. But um, the feeling from the very beginning of us as a group when we went through the process of electing who we wanted to build and who was going to be the architects chosen and the whole process of the meeting, you, I, you can see the hard work done by everybody and it, it's, yeah, it's just it's a no-brainer like Russell pointed out pretty clear that, you know, this is something that I think would be beneficial. You know, I hope that sort of answered your question. Yeah. yeah. That's fine, thank you. Are there any more questions? More than a Morena, Chris, thanks oh, for coming Morena. in. Yep. Um, look, I, I could have asked this question of one of the other speakers, but it, it sort of more sprung to mind when Mr Barrett came in and apologised for not hearing the previous corridor. But what was interesting, and I said to Councillor Buswell, was despite not hearing the corridor, the, the points that he made were in line with some of the previous speakers around a mana mm. enhancing activity. And, the, and the, the question that I have to you, we keep hearing this referred to by others as a building. But what I'm hearing this morning in the corridor is that this is more than a building um, in terms of the place and what mm. that means in terms of telling that story. So maybe you could help us understand what that means to, to Māori in terms of that it is more than a building, um, that through the expression of what goes on in that site actually tells a richer story and it talks about the history. Maybe just a... To yeah. others, it's to some, it's a building, but to you, what does it, what oh, it represent? It, it's a place where we gather, you know, where uh, where you come together, like when family, for example, at the Christmas table, you know, you get together, you talk to each other, you want to know what your kids are doing. This is what my kids are doing. It's it's a vocal point. It's a place where where you want to share that conversation. You know, it's good times. Is it, as one way of looking, but but I, I sort of see it as a beautiful place where we could decorate with the art of fukairo weaving, kofai fai, to show the world that you know. I think it's better than a carrot, you know, or or or, or a trout, <laughs> you know. If we had something, you know, like I said, you know, if we had that waka up on its end, fully cut, you know, that, that, that's that's what I believe it could generate that. Gosh, you've got to go there. But it, also for Māori, that they feel comfortable there, that they see their tūpuna, their stories. And then it will always be looked after, if that be the case. You know, you treasure something that means a lot to you. If it doesn't mean a great deal to you, you, you don't treasure it. That's what I see. I, I, I see the heart in our people and our partners. You know, we're going to be here for a long time. You know, let's work together. Mm. That's what I see. Kia ora. Thank you for that. There's Kia no ora. other questions. Have a good day. Um, can I still ask if the Solomons around? No. Ah, Maori Oh, here Ah, 
Thank you for the treaty partners. We will now take a 10 minute break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 